Hello, my name is Joe Hoyle, and I'm one of the authors of your financial accounting textbook. I want to look today at Chapter 7, and we're going to work together Problem 3 and then Problem Number 4. I think that if you work these two problems, it will give you a good way to look at how to do accounts receivable, bad debt expense, and the allowance for doubtful accounts. Before we get started, go read Problem 3 and Problem 4. See what you can do. And then you and I can work this problem together and make it come out correct. Now, when I work these problems, I prefer to use kind of a T account approach. So I'm going to set up an account receivable T account right here. And I will need a little bit of a cash account, so I'll put a cash account over here. I won't need it very much. And then I'm going to need the contra account, the allowance for doubtful accounts. So this is my allowance account, and this is my account receivable. I mentioned that the allowance account is a contra account. Now that means that it goes with another account, in this case account receivable, but always as a negative balance. So the account receivable is how much people owe you, and the allowance for doubtful accounts is the balance of what you think will not be collected. When you report your balance sheet, you'll subtract the allowance from the account receivable and that will be the figure that you report, which is called the net realizable value, which is basically an estimation of the amount that you think will be collected. Now, you'll also need a sales T account, as well as a bad debt ex uh, expense T account, bad debt expense. Now, I like to put them and group them this way, so that, that on this side, you have the balance sheet accounts, and you group those together. And on this side, you have the income statement accounts, and you group those together. I think that helps you keep these things separated correctly. In problem number three, we have a couple of basic transactions, and I'll just plug those in very quickly. It says they make sales on account of $800,000. i will leave the zeros off. And those were sales, so that's a debit to account receivable and a credit to sales. We've done that entry many times. That should be fairly simple. They also collect cash of $430,000, so we will debit cash for $430,000 and credit $430,000 to account receivable. Again, a very basic transaction. But then comes the transaction that can cause you problems, and that is that $31,000 of the accounts are deemed to be uncollectible. Now, you always make the same entry when an account is uncollectible. It never changes. So get it right, and you should be fine. You're not estimating bad debt expenses here. You're writing accounts off as uncollectible. So you take the account, the $31,000, out of account receivable with a credit, and you take it out of the allowance account with a debit. That same entry is always made. Debit the allowance, credit the account receivable. And we get to the end of the year. At that point, and only at that point, do you need to know the method they're using. They're using the percentage of sales method. And that means that we're going to take a percentage, probably based on past experience, and in this problem it's 5%, and multiply that times the sales figure. So that will be $40,000. If you've watched my video at the beginning of chapter 7, I call that the add-in method. Why do I call that the add-in method? Because once you compute that $40,000, then you're going to add that $40,000 into the bad debt expense, and you're going to add the same $40,000 into the allowance for doubtful accounts, and year one is finished. You've gone through the process. That's the only entries you have to worry with. But notice that $40,000 there, that was determined because you took the percentage of sales and you added it in to your bad debt expense and to your allowance account. So at the end of the year, your account receivable balance now is $339,000. Your allowance for doubtful accounts is $9,000, your sales figure is $800,000, and your bad debt expense is $40,000. I added zero some places and some place I didn't. Don't let that bother you. They're all in thousands, basically. Now, we start year two. When you start year two, 
the income statement accounts close out. They go back to zero, and the balances are shifted into retained earnings. So sales is zero, and bad debt expense becomes zero also. And we make the transactions again. For convenience, they make sales of 800000 debit account receivable, and credit sales for 800000 They collect 430000 credit account receivable 430 and debit your cash for 430000 They write off 31000 more, and you make that same entry again. You credit account receivable for 31000 and you debit the allowance balance for 31000 The process is always the same. You get to the end of the year. You have to estimate bad debt expense again. Remember, we're using the percentage of sales method. What is the percentage of sales method? It's the add-in method. For convenience here, we have 800000 in sales the second year. We're still using 5%. It could be a different percentage to come back with $40,000. That is the amount that you'll add in. So therefore, as your year-end adjusting entry, You'll debit bad debt expense for $40,000, again, and you'll credit the allowance for doubtful accounts for $40,000 if you're using the percentage of sales method. And if you can see how we did that, this is the way the process operates. The question says, what are the ending balances? Well, your ending balance for account receivable for cash is $860,000. You can just add the 430s. The ending balance for account receivable, add the debits, Add the credits, that comes back to $678,000. Your ending allowance balance, you have a $31,000 debit, the $9,000 and the $40,000 credits, that works that back to be an $18,000 credit. The sales figure is $800,000, the bad debt expense is $40,000. One last thing, what's reported on the balance sheet? $678,000 in account receivable, a contra account, an allowance of $18,000, that gives you net realizable value, the amount that you're going to estimate you're going to collect of $660,000. That's how we do the percentage of sales method. Okay, very good. Now let's work the problem again, or work a problem again. This time we'll work problem four. And the reason we're going to work problem four is it's not the percentage of sales method. It's the other way of estimating. It's the percentage of account receivable method. If you can do percentage of sales, you can also do a percentage of account receivable. So once again, just like before, I will start off with a bunch of T accounts. We'll have a cash T account over here to keep up with the cash. And just like before, we'll have an account receivable T account to keep up with all of our account receivable. We'll need an allowance for doubtful accounts. And the allowance for doubtful accounts, of course, is our contra account that measures the amount of bad debts within account receivable. We'll have a sales account over here, and we'll finish with our bad debt expense account right here. Now, very good. Remember what I've done before. I've always grouped these by putting the balance sheet accounts on one side and the income statement accounts on the other side. In the percentage of sales method, we focused on the income statement side. It was percentage of sales is bad debt expense. This time, we're going to focus on the allowance, the account receivable side, and look at that side more. Let's make our basic entries. It says in this problem that you have sales the first year of a million two, and so we'll debit account receivable and credit sales for a million two. It says we have cash collections of 800,000, so we'll credit account receivable for 800,000 and debit the cash account for 800000 These are just basic journal entries. No reason you can't do these. And then we come to that entry that we had before, and that is they write some accounts off. Remember, that's not an expense. That's a reduction in the receivable balances. The expenses will be estimated at the end of the year. Here we had $30,000 in accounts written off. So you reduce the account receivable with a credit, and you debit the allowance account with a debit. That removes the accounts from your accounting records. And you're to the end of the year. Once you get to the end of the year, you're ready to make your estimation. But remember, this time we're going to use the percentage of account receivable. So we need to figure out what that balance is. If you add the debits and credits in the account receivable, it is $370,000. 
They have looked at factors like their past history, and they have determined that 5% of those accounts receivable will turn out to be uncollectible. 5% of $370,000 is $18,500. Now, if you have read or watched the opening video for Chapter 7, you know that I call this method the up to method. The percentage of sales method was the add-in method. You added in the estimation. This time, we're going to bring the figure up to that balance. And what amount are we estimating? We're estimating the allowance account. The allowance account has a $30,000 debit, and we want to bring it up to an $18,500 credit. And we'll do that by debt crediting allowance for $48,500. That's going to bring that balance up to $18,500. You need $48,500 to bring it up to $18,500. And your debit then is bad debt expense for $48,500. And you're through with year one. You've got your sales. You've got your collections. Your accounts were written off. And then you made your estimation of $18,500. And when you made that estimation, you brought this allowance account up to 18.5. If you can do two years, you can do 22 years. So let's make sure we do the second year. In the second year, they have sales of a million two. We'll need to close out, of course, the sales account and the bad debt expense account. They had the sales in year one two of a million two, so that increases sales by a million two. They collect $800,000, so that reduces your account receivable and increases your cash account. And again, they have $30,000 that are written off as bad, so we make the same entry every time. We credit account receivable for $30,000, and we debit the allowance balance for $30,000. We're now ready to make our final estimation. How much is the allowance for doubtful accounts? Because when you do the percentage of account receivable, that's what you're estimating. We take the balances in our account receipt. It's a little crowded there, but you see what we're trying to do here. And the balance in that account, if you add all of this stuff up, that, uh, that account balance should be $740,000. Add the debits, add the credits, $740,000. You're going to make 5% of that, which means that you want to bring your allowance account up to $37,000. Your really final question is, you have in the allowance account an $11,500 debit. You want to bring it up to $37,000 credit because it's a reduction in account receivable. How do you go from that $11,500 debit to that $37,500 credit? In that case, it takes a $48,500 credit. And if you do that, the $11,500 debit, the new $48,500 credit, brings that balance up to $37,000. And that's what you are trying to do, bring it up to $37,000. And you have a debit of bad debt expense of $48,500. How much was sales? A million two. How much is bad debt expense? $48,500. How much was your accounts receivable? $740,000. How much is your cash? The cash apparently is a million six hundred thousand. And finally, how much is your allowance account? We all know it's thirty-seven thousand dollars because that's what you're trying to bring it up to. I know that this is news material for a lot of it, but you and I do mean you can do this. You can make an A. You can work this. These two problems show you the percentage of sales method and the percentage of account receivable method. Go to it.